Namaste, everyone. I'm just kidding. Welcome back. I'm not a yogi, if you can't tell. Uh, welcome back to Theater Advice and FCAV Systems. We'll put the links down here somewhere uh, and do a little commercial at the end. Um, today, I wanted to talk about something that is um, really important but forgot about, and not necessarily audio video, but we at Theater Advice, we literally do like everything. So um, it's very important that people understand this stuff, though, because it's it drives a lot of whether AV works properly or not, and that's network basics. Um, this is not for my IT people. Uh, you guys all know more than I do by a long shot. So this is for people that, you know, just use their AT&T modem at home or whatever, and, you know, probably don't even know that this other stuff exists. They might have a little um, system throughout the house, mesh networks, stuff like that, Google. Um, this is gonna be talking about the more serious versions of that stuff, what each piece does, why it does it, that kind of thing, as a very uh, basic overlay, okay? I'm not gonna be getting super detailed. This is a layman's term version of this stuff, and I hope that you guys take it that way. Um, welcome to my studio, by the way. Do you like this? I bought a $10 uh, tablecloth, so we're fancy now. I don't know if you can tell. So we're gonna pretend, this, by the way, I unboxed all this stuff. I hope no one gets mad at me because unboxings are apparently a big deal. I'm sorry you didn't get to see me open the cardboard, um, but whatever. And uh, they also go like, they go over like every accessory. This is how these things plug in. This is a plug. Um, I don't know why anyone ever needs to see that. This is the stuff that drove me nuts about YouTube before. I think it's all pointless. Um, so this is the plug, I'm not gonna open it today. This is gonna be our modem because I don't carry modems uh, for the most part. That's like a Best Buy thing um, or they give it to you, your internet service provider or ISP. When you hear that term ISP, that means AT&T, your internet service provider. So that's one thing that's a term, but it's outside of the boxes that are sitting here. So we're gonna pretend this is the modem. I told you I'm fancy. So we got the, I got my sticky notes and all that modem. So your modem is your is your bridge, right? The internet comes from the house or comes from the street, comes in, plugs into the modem. If you have a modem only in the house, you can plug your computer into the modem and go online. Um, but you can only go to one place online. It gives your computer one IP address, essentially. You'll be able to surf the web, but that's it. That's like the most rudimentary version of modem. Now, most companies give you what's called a modem router, com uh, modem router Wi-Fi combo. That means all three of these things are built into one crappy box. Nobody wants that. That's crap. Don't do that. So go even Best Buy and get some sort of router Wi-Fi thing and start splitting that stuff off. Some internet service providers are worse and some are better. AT&T used to be terrible. Now they'll put it in bridge mode, it's called. Um, bridge mode is very important. In order to get all this stuff set up, you need to call them and get your stuff, uh, get that turned into bridge mode. <clears throat> what that means is it takes your modem router and it turns it only into a modem. Um, now, the truth of the matter is at and still in the background controls a bunch of your information and has some of their routing on because they lie, but that's neither here nor there. So this is the modem, it's the bridge, the internet comes in, gives your house internet. Now the router, if whether it's built into the same box or separated, the router is what routes all of it, all the stuff. So let's say you have 30 things in the house, those 30 things have what's called an IP address. So that's an address that's on your networks, 192.168.0.2, because this is going to be dot one. Dot one is your gateway. So 192.168.0.1.0.0, whatever. So this is going to be the address of your router. And it is your, think of like your network as a mix master, right? If you didn't have a router and you, it would be like all of the, <clears throat> all of the highway traffic in, in the world trying to get down two lanes, right? You put it on a mix master, which seems messy, but this is giving things addresses and it's routing, routing the internet. So it's taking things in and sending it out of your house, which is upload speed and taking things in your home. So essentially it's gonna send out addresses to your TV, to your Sonos units, to your PS5, all that stuff. And each thing is gonna have a unique address on your network and that's how you can access those things. Um, now, sometimes things are called double, get what's called double natted, which means your router, for whatever reason, I have no idea. The whole, the whole job of this dumb thing is to give one address per thing, but sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason. So, and that's where the smart guys listening to me will know, but it will give something two addresses. So you have to literally go into that thing that can constantly gets the address of something else 
and put it on what's called a static IP address, which means you need to change the IP address, choose one that's open within the range of your router, which is usually 200, choose one that's open and then keep it static, keep it there, and then it makes it not try to auto choose that IP address for whatever reason. Um, so these are just some troubleshooting weird things too. But um, router routes all of, your, all of your stuff. Now, routers only have two outputs, right? So it's got your input from your modem. So the modem plugs into the input. Now it gives your router internet. Now your router can start to see things on your network, but it only has two, sometimes they have four. A lot of times they have four. This one has two. So this is a gigabit router, has two, uh, has two inputs. This guy then plugs into this, which is called a switch. I don't want to confuse anybody. It doesn't, doesn't really switch anything. It's a splitter. So this is an internet splitter. So this takes this one here and plugs it into here and gives you 24, I think it's 24. Did I grab a 24? This is a 24 splitter. So now you can take this one, plug it into here, and it powers all 24 essentially um, and gives all 24 of them gigabit ethernet. Um, you can have two of these switches and two of these outputs to it. And now you have 48 devices all wired on your house. Um, the first thing I want to tell anybody is Wi-Fi is here to stay. Wi-Fi is great. All that stuff is fine. If something has a hole in it in your house, meaning if the TV has an Ethernet jack, if anything has this Ethernet jack in it, it should be plugged into a switch, hopefully, if you have enough wire in your house. This is why I talk so much about properly wiring a home, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I believe in wiring things that can be wired and then use your phones and your iPads and all that stuff, Wi-Fi in the house. So this is a properly set up network, modem to router, router to switch. Now you've got everything plugged in. Now you need Wi-Fi throughout the house. Hopefully if you had your house wired, wired designed properly, you have some network jacks around the house to do either like some sort of mesh network, Eros or a lot of these other DIY companies that are out there, Ubiquity. You can put things around the house and get Wi-Fi spread out. It, they work very well. They're very good, cost effective. This is a five or six hundred dollar, you know, quad antenna. Probably, probably do half of a you know, thirty-five hundred square feet by itself. Um, these are ceiling mounted power over Ethernet, which which means you either need to use the PoE adapter that's in here, so it's powered, or use a power over Ethernet powered switch, which this is not one, and it'll power this guy and it mounts to the ceiling on this plate right here. And then this gets, this comes off, this guy goes on the ceiling, you slide this guy in nice and sexy, you put this thing on the back so you don't see any connections. I just installed something, it's super quick. So this thing is on the ceiling and now you've got a cone of silence, cone of silence, that's a 60s movie, a cone coming down like this. So they're good to have high, second floor, that kind of thing, or have them triangulated throughout the house so that the cone kind of spreads out over more areas. You don't want wireless access points or a WAP as this is called. You don't want them close to one another. So you want them like 75 feet apart um, or so for best kind of home coverage if you have a large home. I have like four of these in my house, not because my house is super giant, it's just kind of weirdly spread out. Um, so, you know, depending on the house and house design, you may need more or less of these things. We only have one of these right outside the door for our whole showroom, um, but it works great. So this is a properly set up commercial grade network where you've got modem to router, router doing the routing to a switch. Everything that comes into this switch, the router sees, gives addresses to, and then speaks to and continues to give them internet. And then you've got wireless access points throughout your house, giving you great Wi-Fi coverage. Um, obviously in today's world, almost nothing is more important. People buy all this expensive stuff and then it doesn't work because their network sucks. They buy an automation system. They call me all the time to go, oh, control four doesn't work that good. And I'm like, cause you have a crappy network. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you have to have a strong network in order to have strong AV centric things in the house. Um, so I did want to kind of do a little, you know, deep dive on, on networks and how they should be set up. It's very easy to add something like this to any home. Honestly, you can, you can get your own router um, and then you know your own switches and really give yourself a better network. You just have to do a little bit of research on how to get your modem router combo, which is more than likely what you have unless you've worked a deal with your ISP, internet service provider, to just give you a modem or buy your own modem and they'll give you just the pipe, which is cool when they do that. Not a lot of people are doing it. A um, couple, couple vendors here will just give you the internet if you want. If you want to buy your own modem, you just have to buy the right one. So that's a whole other way to go where everything is everything separated. But as long as they can turn their modem router combo and turn the router off so you don't have two routers, 
um, having two routers is a very bad thing, um, then you can do this. So uh, Network Basics, hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different, uh, different flavor. I'll probably just throw this one in the middle of two other postings um, just because I think it's important to, uh, to talk about some of this stuff because this is what we call in our industry the backbone of the home. If your backbone isn't strong, just like your body, uh, not a lot of things work in the house properly. So um, hopefully you, you enjoyed it. Many won't because it's not, it's not the fun stuff, but uh, it's the important stuff. So appreciate you watching. Thanks. Hey, guys, I just wanted to thank you for listening to whatever I was just rambling about. And, of course, if you are in the Dallas area or surrounding areas and you can get here, uh, visit our showrooms in Frisco or South Lake location. And now we can help you anywhere uh, from anywhere in the country through the world's first mom and pop shop on the internet uh, called fcavsystems.com we are very excited about this project uh, we're happy to bring what theater advice does here in texas to everyone thanks for watching